So, you have decided that you want to learn Flutter in 2023, then you have come to the right place. As you may know, I learned Flutter in about 2020, I've been doing it for about 3 years now, and I've released 3 apps, or I've released 2 apps, and I'm about 2 weeks from releasing my next app, and I've built a lot of apps in the between that I haven't really released, if you've seen my 3 hour build series for example, as well as some of the other stuff that I've done. But, I feel like I've gotten pretty good at Flutter, and I've managed to learn it quite a lot, without any fancy university degree, without anything, just a guy in his closet writing Flutter code. If that's what you want to do too, then this video is for you. Here are 10 steps what I would do if I had to relearn Flutter today based on what I know now. First of all, learn computer science basics. I think this is very fundamental. This is something that I kind of did, but I kind of wish that I did more because I had to catch up on it later. And this is like fundamental, such as, you know, how data structures work, how functions work, etc. You can do some quick course like the Harvard Computer Science 100 or whatever it's called, or just watch like a plenty of 10 hour tutorials on YouTube about introduction to computer science. And then you'll also learn like a little bit about the different programming languages for example, the history of them, what they can be used for, what different ones are used for. So I think that's really good and it will really help you understand how the code works later on in your programming journey. Number two, decide what platform you mainly want to work on. So Flutter is great because as you probably know by now, you can release apps on both iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, Web, and I think Linux as well, which is pretty damn cool, but with just one code base. However, from my experience, you do kind of have to specialize on one, as there will be some different packages that you use on some of them, some different features that you can tap into depending on the system that you're on. So what I've chosen, for example, is mobile app development, which I think is quite fun, but if you want to build desktop apps, for example, like for Mac or Windows, or if you want to do web, then what the packages that you're going to be using are going to be slightly different, as well as your approach to the design of the app is going to be slightly different. So that's step number two, decide what platform from you mainly want to build on and that's not to say that you can't branch off later and build apps for web if you choose to focus on mobile platform for example but this is like gonna be where you learn and where you know your framework kind of develops from number three then first of all that we're gonna drive straight into it but like watch two or three build along tutorials there are plenty of ones like this on YouTube where they are super good where you build along with someone someone builds an app on YouTube I'll link a couple down below and you just follow along you don't really need to understand it but they kind of show you how to install and set up your IDE and then how to install flutter and dart for example and then they just build an app and just go along with it. You just basically have to copy the code. And when you do this, you'll kind of start to begin to understand what are the different things that go where and what do they do in the app itself. And I think this is super useful for learning the basics and the principles of it. Number three, learn about widgets. Flutter is all about widgets. It's widgets mania over there. So basically in Flutter, everything consists of widgets. Flutter is actually one big long widget tree where you start off with one widget and then inside of this widget, you have a bunch of other widgets that contains children of the other widgets. So for example, you may start off with a widget which is your homepage, in there you have a scaffold. The scaffold has a widget which is an app bar, and then the app bar you can give a particular value. So once you start looking at it like this, like a widget tree, it becomes very simple to contextualize how Flutter actually works. All this is just a bunch of different widgets that you stack on top of each other to build an app, essentially. So take our example of the scaffold. We started off with a homepage. We say return a scaffold. Inside of the scaffold, we take the parameter app bar in the scaffold and we assign an app bar widget to it. In this app bar widget, we can give it a title and the title, as you may guess, we get inside the text widget. And that's all it is. You built an app bar in Flutter in about two seconds. And this applies to all widgets. For example, you can have a column. Inside of the column, you can have a container. And inside of the container, you can have a image widget, they're all widgets to stack them on top of each other. So learn a little about, bit about the different types of widgets, the main ones that you're going to be using, as well as some of the packages and also how widget trees work. Read a little bit about it, look through the different widget packages that Flutter's offer and just get familiar with it before you get started. Number five, after this you're going to begin testing some simple apps. So Flutter gives you some boilerplate stuff where you can press a button in order to add to a counter that's on the middle of the screen. You can start off by just changing this. So for example, instead of having the counter, you can make it pick a random word or pick a random color color based on something where you can start completely from scratch and just build a little column list for example but just start testing around what will it look like if I take a simple one page app a scaffold and inside of the scaffold I place a bunch of different types of widgets all over the place what will that end up looking like just mess around with that it doesn't need to be anything that works it doesn't need to be anything complicated but it will improve your understanding of how the app works and how the widgets combine to make whatever you see on the page come alive. Number six, and in this order, which may be a little bit controversial, but learn about Dart. Dart is the underlying language of Flutter, and Flutter is the package which allows you to build Flutter apps. Kind of like JavaScript is used in React Native, and React Native is the package which allows you to take this JavaScript and turn it into something which is usable in a mobile app. It's a framework, essentially. But Dart is the underlying language, so learn a little bit about the data types, like the lists, the maps, strings, how they're formatted, how you declare them, for example, how functions work, 
work in Dart, etc. This can also be a quick like one, two hour tutorial on YouTube, for example, or just read through a textbook, whatever, whatever you do to learn, right? But this is also something that I didn't do early enough. I didn't learn about Dart. So I've always struggled with declaring variable types. For example, I just quite recently realized how you can uh, make a list take strings, for example, as opposed to make a list take integers. I didn't know that was a thing before. I always just wondered whatever those little squawky crocodile mouth things were doing there. So that's a big recommendation I have. Learn about Dart so you know about this all to begin with and then we'll make it so much easier to work with the code inside of your Flutter app moving forward. Number seven, make use of the internet. First of all, the internet is fantastic. It can also be a pretty weird place, but most of, for the most part, it's pretty fantastic. And now we have these advanced tools like ChatGPT, for example. So make sure to use Stack Overflow, use ChatGPT, and whenever you find a problem, you can almost always Google it. It's incredible. You can come up with whatever small problem you have for a particular package that you've chosen, and you can just Google it. Someone will have solved that problem before you. So trust me, you're not special, even though your mom tells you you are. But make sure that you do make use of all of these resources. Read the documentation for the packages that you use it's usually super simple and it's super easy to understand also if you do have any questions there's a bunch of people out there on stack overflow are willing to help in order to boost their own uh, help points or whatever you call them there or you can ask chat gpt that also works for the most part that happens to be a little bit outdated though some of the times because that one stopped updating data in 2021 i believe and then since 2021 there's been quite a lot of change to uh, the different flutter packages but i guess the moral of the story is that tip seven is that when you get stuck on a problem which you inevitably will you will get stuck more than you can ever imagine like it's common for you this is living hell when you get stuck on these different problems that you think you're gonna be able to solve you should be able to solve but you can't manage to solve it just make sure that you Google it, don't give up. Google Stack Overflow, GitHub, read the documentation, ask ChatGPT, whatever. You can get through it and that's for sure. Number eight. And this is something that's gonna be required when you start making a little bit more complicated app, but this is learn about state in Flutter. So state is whatever kind of you have on the screen at that particular moment in time. So you need to learn about stateful, stateless widgets. For example, stateful widgets are widgets that need to be updated continuously. For example, if you're streaming data from a database such as Firebase, you need to update the page continuously, then you'll be using a stateful widget. If you're just displaying text for example on a screen then you probably need a stateless widget also learn about how you can manage the state across the app by using for example providers so that something which is streamed on one main page can also be accessed on a different account page for example i think i would put quite a lot of effort into learning and understanding state in flutter this is also something which i did kind of like one or two years into my whole flutter building career journey whatever you want to call it so i would definitely start try to do that as early as possible so that you understand it going forward this will not only make it easier to develop more advanced apps but it will also make them perform better if you you can manage it well. Number nine. Number nine is to learn about storage. So pretty much whatever app you're building, you're going to be needing some kind of storage, whether that be a database up in the cloud, up in the sky, whatever you call it. I'm not really sure where it is. It's just somewhere out there. Or if it's a local database, such as a simple one that's just shared preferences, where you're storing a little bit of text or a Boolean value. Or if it's like an SQL table, which you're storing inside of your app. Learn about all of these different ones, because no matter what you're going to be building, you're going to be needing one of them, probably a combination of them. And it's going to be different for, for whatever app you're building. For for example, I'm using Firebase in pretty much all of the apps that I've built and Firebase is a service by Google that integrates really nicely with Flutter where you can stream a real-time database or you can just take a snapshot of it too, of course, and you can also implement it with uh, authentication of the app so you can log in with Google, for example, and all of these good features. So make sure that you learn a little bit about storage and how you're going to be using that in your app and just how you understand like the main ones. So I'd say Firebase, Shared Preferences and SQL within Flutter. Lastly is to just begin building some more advanced apps. Have a crazy idea of something you want to build just try it and build it it's going to be so much easier than you actually think i actually had this when i had my cocktail app which was my first kind of advanced app and then looking back the app was shit if i compare it to the apps that i can build now but nevertheless to me at that particular moment in time it felt advanced and what i did is that i always wanted to like build some kind of reference app like that and at that time i was quite into making drinks for some reason alcoholic much what i did was i just sat down i started i didn't design the app that's why it looked horrible i just started building and then i solved and figured out all my problems as i went and that kind of worked for me. But I think that's going to be super important because it's when you build these kinds of apps that you learn the most. Of course you can learn from YouTube tutorials but it's the most dangerous thing ever to get stuck in a tutorial trench when you're watching 9, 10, 8, I'm not sure I counted that word, uh, different tutorials on YouTube where you're not really learning, you're just copying someone else. So make sure that you're actually trying stuff yourself, you're 
going on your own intuition and as you go along you'll figure out more stuff than you actually think that you know and then you'll also add to your own knowledge okay if I try this then this works if I do that then I'm gonna be able to use this in the future you'll kind of start building your own internal framework of the different things you can use and how you can execute and do different functions when you're building in the future and this is only something that you're gonna learn once you're yourself building relatively advanced apps so having like a cookbook app that you always wanted to build just start it and build it have like a gym tracker app that you always wanted to build just try it build it and go for it it's quite a lot of fun when you get going and you manage to solve all these problems that's pretty much the, the most fun part so that's tip number 10 whatever idea you have just try it just get going get started the best time to get started was yesterday the next best time to get started is today so make sure this is the last video you watch on how to learn flutter and actually begin to learn flutter uh, as that's what you've chosen to do clearly if you watch this video all the way to the end if you want to get some inspiration on your flutter building journey or if you want to just follow along my, my journey in general then feel free to check out my series that's called three hour builds where i build as much of a flutter app as i can in three hours or my starting startup series where i build a whole full stack flutter app and release it to the world thank you so much for watching if you have any other tips then feel free to leave them down below in the comments if you like this video then leave a like subscribe it's completely free of charge i know unbelievable what a bargain right and i'll see you in the next one Peace.